Hello, hello, hello. Welcome once again to Over Coffee, our morning talk show with my co-hosts, Rich, John, and Doug, if he's there. I don't know if he's there or not. Uh, and uh, this is, and I'm Game Master Dave. This is where we talk about games or just about anything else uh, at 6.30 in the morning on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Today is uh, Friday, February 26th, <laughs> year of Apocalypse Plus. 2021 hey i got my chance to play my twilight 2000 role-playing game campaign last night had a ton of fun have you guys played anything since uh wednesday we talked last got up early nobody <laughs> well there you go <laughs> i i, I haven't got the chance trip. to play anything but i've recently found a new podcast so i've been Ooh. listening to that with what, what podcast um, it's called Doc Dice. Uh, one of the podcasts that I listened to, they did like an affiliation ad of like, oh, hey, check out, we have a pod, we have an advertisement for a different show. Uh, it's a horror themed role playing podcast where they play D&D, but there's a much more emphasis on like, um, you know, mood and atmosphere. And it's, the DM does a lot more stuff in third person for the players. So rather than saying like, you do this or you get attacked, it's like, you know, the, the, I don't remember the exact character's names. So it was like, oh, the cleric suffers a, a blow or the, the, the thief fails to realize the trap that's been laid out and, and suffers the consequences. So it's a very thematic kind of show. They, um, got, uh, they got 26 episodes already. About well, apparently they do one episode a month unless they stepped it up. All right. I just subscribed. Dark Dice. I'll listen, I'll listen to it. I'll let you know. Well, you listened to a couple episodes, right? You liked it? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like four episodes in, I think. Okay. You started from the beginning or just the most recent? Yeah, no, from the beginning. Okay. Cool. I'll check it out too. That's awesome. Rich, you've been busy with work, of course. That's what you're always busy with. Oh my God. It's been ridiculous. But something, the, the planets aligned. Um, hello there. Welcome. We have someone in chat. Hey. <clears throat> all right. Um, we, something happened and the planets aligned. Um, and. We uh, I, and I was able to play Project Zomboid last night oh, <clears throat> cool. with the group, and we have a permanent server, um, so that way, uh, it was pretty cool. So we were able to, um, so we, you know, so we jumped on, but we got we, we got a really bad server build. Well, bad is relative. We okay. started with no electric because usually it's from zero to 14 days that you have electric and water completely out when the server started. Um, what else? It was it, it was a whole bunch of other stuff. There's more zombies. It um a ton of zombies attacked you. Oh Ooh. my god, more zombies I than I can cool. count. I, I'm I on think... my third character already. Because I died twice. Right. So we couldn't find weapons, we couldn't find tools, we couldn't find anything. Now we have a base. Now oh, it's working. No, no, no. <clears throat> and then John is apparently ran into this brick wall. Because no, he said no. So... Um, All right, we're going to hand it to John for the quick news, and then we'll go back to what we've been playing, because um, I... Yeah, he's, he's apparently saying no, 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 and it's no, interrupting no, everything that. you're so saying. I, I, I hopped on really quick to kind of get some of my reports ready this morning for work, and nothing oh. uploaded from yesterday. Oh, it's work. Um, I don't want to hear about it. Go, go back to moaning about work. <laughs> I have to... I'm now in charge of doing a lot of the reconciliations for, my, for, you know, for the bank now, so which which is fine. It, it takes a long time, but it's all aligned upon reports because you need to know what the actual activity was the bank was, and nothing's uploaded yet, which is not good because it's supposed to happen at the end of the previous business day. Oh, John, so, you have a job. Nobody cares. <laughs> well, I know. I can talk about the news. I'm going to use that, that line for... Into... I, I, that progressive commercial is just over-the-top outrageous. So, so he was wasn't saying no, 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 because there was a lot of zombies in Project Zomboid? Is that... The, yeah. I thought the, I yeah. A connection. So, so all of a sudden, we don't care. Um, also, uh, I have been off from DMing other than... Um, other than uh, uh, basically D&D &D for about a month now, and, um, and, and it's time to go back. So now I have to um, now I have to go back and so where I last left my players is they were at the they are in they went they had to travel through the underdark to get someplace because it was the only way to actually find this place. So they they I left them and, and, and unfortunately they have to travel through a demon stronghold to get to the other side, which is where the door is. So I left them at the front of the hedge maze. Um 
for this Stephen Stronghold. The hedge maze, though, the hedges aren't actually hedges. They're made okay. up of uh, centipedes, worms, and snakes, and crawling things, and um, that that they just stay in form and just continues to writhe as they walk through it. And maybe once in a while strike out. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. I have to finish writing that up, but we'll see. Okay. So I, I'll, I'll go back to it. Uh, not next week. I'll, I'll go back in. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, should I cover the news or actually John want to interrupt me we, me with a some sort of news event? It's like a, yes. it's like a breaking news. Like and a- Josh, thank you for joining us. Feel yeah. free. Throw in anything. If, you, if, if one of us bores you with something, just just tell us what you talk about. <laughs> if you got a topic to talk about, let me know. <laughs> so, yeah. are we ready? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Breaking news. Right. So, uh, wait, wait. I like had... the I, I like the music you had. What was the music? <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember that? Was that was that night? I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Breaking okay. news. I'll go. I'll go. All right. Breaking news. Um, I want a quick one second. So apparently Hasbro had some kind of a, a meeting or something like that yesterday, or some kind of a trade show announcement kind of deal. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. And we have been speculating because it seems like they've been a little bit unusual when it comes to D&D. Not like they haven't been supporting it, but they like it seems like they could be doing more or they've been very hush-hush over what their future plans are. And there was some speculation, especially with some other people online. That wait, Hasbro wait, might be they're getting at... bought out. They're getting bought out by Asmodee. No, 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 no. <laughs> I know. Okay, okay. If anything okay. actually, it's the opposite. Oh. Uh, the article from ComicBook.com is Wizards of the Coast gets a big promotion at Hasbro. Yeah, I can't just leave it. I'll, I'll get it. It's. <laughs> John is not talking to us, by the way. John is talking to his family. I'm, I'm, I'm literally on my coat on. Just put it down. <laughs> when you ask me to do something, so, you, I read the article as well. <laughs> I read an article on it too. And, Can you guys link it? Can you link it in the thing? Uh, I yeah, there's a couple. Uh, so basically, Hasbro is. Uh, I got it. I got it. No problem, Josh. It. No problem, Josh. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully, we'll see you again. Wizards of the Coast is becoming its own operating division within Hasbro. Oh! Reflecting, reflecting the wild success experienced by the game maker, game maker over the last five years. Hasbro will, well, this was from yesterday. Hasbro will announce the news later today at an investor event. Under reorganization, Wizards will become one of three divisions and will become one of three Hasbro divisions. I'm not sure what the other two are. Um, and will be tasked with expanding Dungeons and Dragons, Magic the Gathering, and other games, as well as creating new games and overseeing digital licensing for all of Hasbro. Hmm. The news follows the announcements of the most recent Dungeons and Dragons book, where Van Richter's Guide to Ravenloft, and will greatly expand one of the game's most popular campaign settings. Um, also to be announced later are crossovers between Magic the Gathering and Lord of the Rings and Warhammer 40k. Details are scarce, but the crossover with Tolkien's seminal fantasy property will be a full-style expansion set. Um, uh, As well as reorganization, will divide the company into three parts. In addition, the newly minted Wizards and Digital Division will also be a consumer products covering toys and classic board games and then Entertainment Division. So that's probably what those other two are. So it seems like with Hasbro, it's basically going to be television and, and entertainment, um, board classic board games and toys and gaming, which Wizards is going to be heading up. Hmm. Don't forget Mr. Potato Head. Well, that's on the toys. No, no, no. Don't forget. I mean, don't forget the news about it. Oh, also, yeah, Mr. Well, it's not Mr. Potato Head anymore. Now it's just Potato Head. Right. It's it. Uh, Mr. Potato Head is becoming gender neutral. So John and I were talking about this beforehand. Wasn't. I mean, yeah, you, you threw the word Mr. at the front, but was it ever anything but just a potato? I, um, I, you know. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it's, it is Mr. Potato Head, and there was Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head at one point. Yeah, no, I know, I get it, I get it. Um, but but so, why did why did we why did we get stuck on that? What is so I I don't know. It wasn't it's Hasbro. Wasn't, it, the the announcements they both came out at the same time. 
But was it, but isn't Wizards already a subdivision of Hasbro? No, apparently it wasn't. Apparently it was part of the the <clears throat> they were just brand they were just two product lines with Okay. We thought it so, was. I, I guess we we wrongly thought that it was it was that way, but it's it's not its own company. <clears throat> okay. It may have been a, div a subdivision within itself, but now it's a it's probably it's forming its own company. Per okay. Se. So th this this will give advan This is this is this is this is good news, right? This is like uh, this is giving advantage to them, like uh, working on their own on their own yeah. product. It gives, them, it gives them much more control. I mean, also on the downside, though, it probably puts a lot more pressure on them yeah. as well. It does mean that if the if if it doesn't perform well, it's on them. But at the very least, it does mean that um, yeah, they they now have more creative control but it also means that like they're going to probably be looking to produce more content so does that mean that we get a sixth edition or now that they let's say aren't under the, the um the instructions of hasbro as much do they maybe try a different approach to the future of D D? right okay we we don't know the biggest problem is we don't know right right okay we don't know, <laughs> but at least it could be something, right? I mean, we we don't know. Just because it's it's actually it's actually easier to separate a division than it is product lines within your main division. Okay, but just throwing that out there. Okay, okay, that makes sense. I guess you know you put somebody in head of it. Now now you have somebody that goes to the main meetings that says, okay, we're working on this. We have this challenge. We had this success. We can we can blame you. And now, and now and they also got someone they can play. <clears throat> also gives them a little bit more of a granular look at each one of the products to see how it's performing. Okay. I just had an interesting thought. I just had an interesting thought, and I'm just curious what you guys think about this, especially based on that announcement. I really wish Doug was here, but I'll, I'll kind of put my two cents out there. Do we really want his opinion? We always assumed that a new edition would be inevitable because it works well monetary wise, because it always does good sales numbers wise. But if let's say 5B is doing strong, if they continue to support it, what if they just expand it in other ways without coming out with a new edition? Uh, they could do anything they want. I, 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 I'm not gonna speculate one way or another. Um, I, well, the reason why I thought about it is, think of like classic board games and stuff like that they usually just have the core game and they might make tweaks or cleanups to it, but they don't overhaul it entirely. With D&D, yeah, they always came out with new additions, but part of that was because they drastically changed the rules so much. And we've speculated that we don't really know if you could really overhaul 5e any further than it already is. I, I don't, I mean, technically, that's all they've done, right? The, the, the only difference, when you think about it, that's what the that's what the editions are. The editions are new versions of the same board game. It's new editions of the same role playing game. You know, but they do have different rules, though. Like it, it's not like I mean, granted, there is some similarities, but I mean, fourth edition is wildly different than third edition, which is wildly different than first edition. There's some similarities that do carry through. True, but. <laughs> They are like, you know, if you give somebody a copy of each edition, they'll be able to see the similarities, but they're still wildly different. I don't know if you could really go beyond, but also like if you can continue to make it popular enough and if you can continue to brand it and make it a household name, you might not need to basically reinvent the wheel. Like you have to just keep selling it to new customers instead. And if you're continually putting out supplemental support, so it's like, okay, buy the original stuff, and then here's all these new books that have come out over the years that you can add to. Especially if, let's say, they go more digital on their own and take it from that approach of like, well, we're going to have more digital control, so we're going to make all of our stuff available online, or we're going to add more functionality to be able to, you know, integrate d, &D Beyond with, you know, whatever. Sorry, I was getting myself up to the curb, 
But I mean, like I said, it's it basically is the exact opposite of what we thought might happen instead of how it looks like they're going to probably strengthen it. That could be maybe why we haven't seen a lot of the, the yeah. more interesting stuff come out is that they've been holding their punches to kind of really come up with something, you know, like that's like, you know, that's like a big marketing push, you know, like, oh, here's a, here's a new, new exciting well, I, or here's a here's a variant of you know 5e i i guess i guess it's for me it's a confirmation that the game that particular gaming division with you know uh wizards is strong enough to get good recognition from hasbro do i do i think i do you guys see that same kind of thing yeah it you know <clears throat> just because you're dividing up a, con a company doesn't always mean doesn't doesn't always mean good things it could mean anything um it's easier to it's easier to sell off. Uh, it's easier to change. Uh, it's got its own autonomy. I mean, there are good things about it. It's got its own autonomy. Um, it no longer has the finance. Doesn't generally have the financial protection. It has to stand there or on its own. Uh, so there's there's a whole bunch of things that come along with, with this reorganization. It may be a good thing. Everybody's hoping it's a good thing. Um, but there, uh, you know. It, it could be for protecting the main company for whatever reason. I, I mean, we'll see. We'll see where it goes, right? I think only the next couple of years will tell whether or not it was a good move or a bad move. It could also be a very big sink or swim move of like, all right, you guys want to show how valuable you are? Like, prove it. Right. 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 Well, I, I you know, I think it's, you know, I, think for, I don't see magic going away in the foreseeable. Interesting for them to be licensed, like cross reference, uh, not cross referencing, crossing over with properties that Hasbro doesn't actually own. Like that's that takes some doing. I'm glad that we've seen it with The Walking Dead, which was a bit of an unusual fit. But like, like Lord of the Rings, um, well, Warhammer. So that's part of interesting stuff. so part of also breaking up these divisions is you can they can actually work differently, right? You can actually let them do. Um, so if they work outside the normal Hasbro model, they can in their own little world. So there's that. All right. So that's the big news. That's what we got. Um, what else do we have? What else do you got? What does Dave got? Dave's got work. Well, uh, unfortunately, I am now heading towards my car, so I don't have the news open. So... You, somebody else would have to read the news if you want to cover those items, or we could talk about something else. That, that we never seems, talked about. That seems like we a never lot. Talked about Metallica. You guys wanted to talk about Metallica. I didn't want to talk about Metallica. Metallica is the I one wanted, subject. I wanted to talk about it just because it was just kind of. I mean, Grant, I've, I've heard a lot of other shows talk about it, but for those who might not have heard, um, BlizzCon, uh, the uh, Blizzard, uh, uh, Blizzard, a completely different gaming company had their their, their 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 big celebration last weekend uh, about a week ago and they had metallica on there to do a concert and whether it was twitch kind of protective of itself or whatever um the concert got interrupted by just generic kind of like hoity-toity music because otherwise it would have set off these uh there was a, a dmca auto auto detecting you know programs that would have been like oh this is this is copyrighted content you got to shut this down which the funny thing is is a lot of people are saying that th that only is as bad as it is because of what metallica did back during the napster days of pushing for you know very harsh legal restrictions against streaming music and digital content and things like that yeah you know when they picked up and sued their own fault when they when they picked up and sued their fans right right they picked up and sued. If you're downloading, if you're downloading Metallica music, you'll never, ever, ever buy another Metallica product again. It's just not going to happen. Right, 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 right. They they sued their fans, the people that pro a lot of people who probably had bought a vinyl, bought a cassette, bought a DVD, some of which probably bought an eight track, went to all their concerts, bought their bought their merchandise, and all they wanted was the songs they already owned on their computer. Also, Rich, don't forget, this was after Metallica 
had, you know, had, had, didn't have a lot of money themselves. It's not like they'd been around for what, 20 years at that point and then sold multiple, multiple, you know, albums and, you know, you know, uh, concerts, all that stuff. So how could you possibly expect millionaires to be threatened that their money would be in jeopardy? You know, like how else are they going to afford that fifth Island? So, so it's, let me, let's be clear. Is that South Park episode. Did you see that South Park I episode? I love that South Park episode. I know exactly what you were talking about. So let me be clear. I don't agree with piracy, but there was a better way to handle that situation. Instead of trying to destroy a new technology because you couldn't figure out how to monetize it, figure out how to monetize it and maybe work with them. Maybe put some product, put, put a, we could have put, listen, everything that we have today, all the, sh the music sharing and everything that we do today with all the, with all the, um, with Google and, and Amazon and I, you know, and those are all based off the same technology. They are. Pandora. I listen to Pandora. And, you know, it's a pretty neat system. Right. And, and it's all based off the same technology. Somebody figured out how to monetize it. So right. we we destroy it and uh, well we but you know Metallica is the one is the example of how I choose how I financially protest I have eliminated Metall everything Metallica from my possession and I don't play any of their music I don't buy any of their stuff I don't listen to it I just don't do it I, won't. I, I guess the big the big thing that happened from this weekend is just just to show how crazy it is and these DMCA takedowns and that a band could be playing their own music and it can be copyrighted flag. So it gets prevented and done. Um, <laughs> I mean, you even have something as stupid as like a Senator wanted to make it a, wanted to make it a, a felony. Like, Oh, if you're streaming copyrighted material, it's a felony charge. Yeah. I saw that. It's insane. Meanwhile, it's, it's all because like, and, and like granted, like streaming is nice. And like I personally use Spotify. Like I even, I even pay for it. But I also know that the actual payout for artists is not great. And part of that is because there's not a whole lot of options out there, possibly because, yeah, you know, all this stuff stemming back from one bad decision made things, you know, made people have to go in other directions. And so allow them to so there, there was a statistic out there during uh, not too long ago when, when Lady Gaga was, was um, first coming out. He was the most pirate. She was the most pirated artist at, at, when she was coming out. But when she started out, she wound up being the most pirated artist ever. And let me tell you, that apparently made her hit a brick wall, and then she was never good after that. <laughs> right? Right? That because we know that's not true. I mean, she was so terrible. She had the, right. she basically had to team up with Tony Bennett. Like. Right. Right. No. In, in other words, she is because she was so amazing. People bought her stuff anyway. Right. You had a lot of people pirating it, but a lot of people bought it. Right. So, and, and not, no, I'm, I'm not condoning pirating. I think it is illegal. Correct. But the thing is, is um, it created a huge buzz. A huge buzz. Because you think about it this way. If people are going to pirate, they're going to pirate. Like, they're going to go out of their ways to do it. They're like, going to figure you, out how to do it. You're always going to have one fraction of, 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 of a consumer base out there that like, but your average person, your day to day person, they're not going to go through the trouble. They're not going to go through the effort because it's it's not that it's overly complicated, but it's just difficult enough. Right. It's like the thing with pirating video games. Like, yeah, there's ROMs out there, but you need an emulator. It's not like you can just download a game online and just play it right away. You know, it's like it. it and not only that, emulators you have to set up and you have to do this and you have to do that. So it's like, yeah, is the emulation a thing? Yeah, but like your average consuming public, they don't emulate. So it's like if you don't provide something that they could acquire easily enough, they're just not going to engage with it. So, I, I, yeah, I agree. So I didn't realize that that was the topic. I, I didn't know about the Metallica thing because I honestly, I don't care. I, I just don't, I don't well, care just, about It was them. just so funny that, like I said, that this is a great example of how messed up things are right now in the online scene, especially when it comes to digital content, and that a band can have their own music flagged. It just ironically happens to be the guys who are responsible for all this nonsense in the first place. Yep, and I'm glad. I'm glad their, I'm glad their music got stopped. Well, I, I have a question. It'd, like it'd be like the guy who invented lawn darts getting impaled with a lawn dart. <laughs> 
I have a question in relation to this, uh, you know, for our street, that's in relation possibly to our streaming network is I see, you know, I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I've been watching a lot on Twitch in the last couple of years and on YouTube videos, like I can go out any band that comes out with a new album in a week, I can go on YouTube and the entire album is on YouTube. And I don't have, I, I don't even have to download Spotify or use Pandora. I can just use YouTube. And then you'll notice some like some of these, you know, popular bands will have, you know, Bob's Music Garage will be the, will be the YouTube channel. They'll put up the whole album. They'll just have a picture of the album cover with all the music in the background. And, uh, and it'll have, you know, 13 million views. And a generally, a about a thousand about a million views on YouTube, on average, could generate about a thousand dollars of income. So, Bob's Music Garage, whatever, made thirteen thousand dollars putting up pirated music, and they get away with it. So we don't here, hold on. We don't, about that. We we okay. I'll let John go, but we don't know that for a fact. Okay, let me explain because. Go ahead, John. You go first. It, it's the big thing about it. The big thing, especially when it comes to YouTube, is monetizing. You could put a video up that you don't put it up to be monetized. If you do, I think it's much more likely to get picked up on. Like, you, like somebody could put something on that generates no revenue. Right. And it might, oh, it might, it okay. might, eventually, it might eventually get flagged anyway. Like, I see it a lot, too. I see, like, videos or episodes, like, there's stuff that was on, um, you know, a lot of those streaming networks that, like, you know, people would put up clips on, like, five or six minutes at a time, and eventually, like, one channel gets taken down, and they throw up another one, and it's always back and forth. But a lot of the times to get around that, or because, you know, they just want to get the content out there, they yeah, don't monetize okay. it because it's less likely to get flagged. If you try to, let's say, Bob's Music Garage, down, like, you know, like I said, burns an entire album and throws it up on YouTube and tries to slap ads on it, it's going to get picked up of like, yeah, this isn't your stuff. This is illegal. Like, get, get rid of this stuff, you know? Plus, you don't know if, right. And you also don't know, like, I don't understand, I don't know if YouTube actually pays um, the music, uh, the music companies, uh, the, the big three, big three or four whoever that's registered to they they may have just a year they may have a subscription because uh google play uh music google music is now youtube music okay so they may just they just may have owned a like permanent subscription and they don't play they don't pay what's his face they don't pay the garage guy because it's not but they do pay the bands some people might also do their own stuff on there too in that like um like DMG like, or like that. Or it's like, like, like bands, yeah, bands might put their own music on there, like Vivo or whatever. It's just like, hey, we want people to be able to see this. Yeah. They might not necessarily run ads, but they still get hits because they can tell that the music is popular. Or it, it, it'll have links to download the music officially instead of just through YouTube. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was... I, go, go ahead. I was going to say, because, like, the appeal, like, yeah, 13 million people probably went to that website and listen to those songs just to see if they're going to like it because you can't put that in your playlist, right? They're still going to go back to Pandora, whatever, because most people have a subscription to something. And I, I think it's, I think it should be perfectly fine. I want to hear it. I'm not paying back in the day. We had to pay $18 for a CD, right? Before you got the chance, before, um, uh, the, the, yeah. The, the stores, the music stores put in that listen to the song first. That's why, that's why they already, always, always released an A and B side single on the radio stations. So then at least you get one or two songs on the radio. You can tell if you like it. Yeah, but it was never a, it was never, it was never good enough, right? Because they, you always put out the best song. That's not enough. Yeah. Don't. That's true too. You know, don't give me that. <laughs> Now, just so you know, I got flagged on one of my YouTube videos recently from a, a game I was playing. I was playing Dominions 5, and they flagged two minutes of my game saying for copyright infringement because it wasn't uh, because of the music and the, the, the background music. I was super surprised. Wait, were you on Twitch? Uh, I was on Twitch initially, but it was but when I posted it on YouTube, that's what I got flagged. So oh, I had the cool. option, I had the option to eliminate the the mute that 
I, so I had to eliminate the audio of like a minute and a half of my stream. But that's kind of what I'm talking about, about how silly it is that like, you know, the protections are so over the top. And the problem too, though, I mean, not to, not to say that it's all a technical thing, like, oh, it's all bots. A lot of it comes down to the companies too. They could just say, all right, we're going to be a lot less draconian about like enforcing copyright stuff. But they're so worried about the floodgates opening up and being like, oh, now everyone's going to pirate everything. It's like, no, just no. be even more strict. Well, what happens, it goes back to licensing, right? Which probably doesn't have the subscriptions for the mass content. So when when something gets flagged, it gets flagged and you know then it would open the floodgates to music companies coming after them going, hey, listen, you played our song and we get royalties for that and hey. So. Well, another, like another, another bad politician take was that some politician was arguing that um, streamers should pay or they should buy rights to stream Let's say, like, if you're a video game streamer, you should not just buy the game, you should also pay the game company a licensing fee just to stream the content. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like, if I'm streaming something, it's one, because I enjoy it and I want people to see it. And two, it's going to make people want to check this thing out. So, you know? which, so this person obviously has no, has never talked to a video game company in their life. Because vi that's it's not, not how a video game, game company video. works. Video game companies sometimes give away Matter of fact, on Project Zomboid, they give it to streamers. Yeah. yeah. To certain streamers, right? That they partnered up with. On purpose. I'm going I'm to need to go. You guys keep chatting, though. No, okay. it's 7 o'clock. No, we're, we're done. We're over anyway. We're over. It's done. Right. Bring okay. us home, Dave. All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, checking us out, uh, whether you see this now or later on YouTube. Uh, and uh, don't forget Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Check us out on the Long Island Tabletop Gaming Streaming Network. Uh, and uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, six thirty in the morning for over coffee. Come chat. Give us uh, uh, give us uh, some give us some topics. Uh, send us some feedback. Um, don't forget to check out the uh, Long Island Tabletop YouTube channel. We talk about YouTube today, and we really appreciate you guys watching. And good morning. Good morning. See you later.